All right, guys, we're back with another video, and today's going to be a quite a challenging one. We have to do a high-pressure fuel pump on this 2014 Torig CNRB TDI. Um, these are a very popular motor in the Cayenne diesel, Q7. You can get these in the Q5. This one in particular is a 2014 Touring. This one's got 212,000 miles on it. Uh, it goes to a testament of how well these things run, but there's a little bit of metal debris in there. Not enough to be concerned with flushing the whole system out, but a few metal specs. So he wants me to change that pump out. And uh, initially, it looks pretty easy. I didn't think I had to take the turbo off, but... I have to take the turbo off so that's not going to be fun and uh, we're kind of starting off here uh, we're going to way down the line um, before you have you're going to have to remove the intake manifold i have another video which i will link um, take off the intake manifold and you'll have access to the high pressure fuel pump right here there's going to be one connector on the metering valve back here you'll have to take off i believe three bolts two low pressure lines and then two high pressure lines one right there and then one right here from there we'll be able to kind of get it out but the thing is there is a there is a sprocket that is attached to the timing chain which the timing chain is in the back of the motor of course and uh that sprocket will fall down or lose tension um, when you pull that pump out if you don't have the correct tool in the back there's a little slot in that sprocket and essentially you have to remove this pedestal assembly which essentially a, supplies oil to the turbo to get to that so you're gonna have to remove the turbo to begin with so we're gonna kind of go down the line here and try to do this as fast as we can but um yeah we're gonna take off these three 12 millimeter nuts holding on the downpipe right here and there's gonna be two t30s holding this egr pipe on and then this whole pipe should just slide on back pry a little bit maybe right there and then from there, we're going to have to probably go underneath and get these three triple squares off. It's going to be kind of a pain in the ass to get these off. But uh, we're going to try and get those three triple squares off. And then try to get them off on each side. And that should grant us access to taking the turbo off of the exhaust manifolds. And then we're going to have to get those two triple squares right there, which hold the center housing down to the pedestal assembly. And then on the compressor side, all we got to do is take off the intake, the electrical connector for the variable geometry system, and then we will have to go down and disconnect the charge pipes. Besides that, it should come off, and we should be able to take off the pedestal assembly, and that will be that. So I'm going to go ahead and pry this downpipe off right now, and then stick it up in the air and probably try to get those triple squares off. By the absolute grace of God, I was able to get this bottom bolt loose. I don't know how, I put a little bit of heat on it. I was uh, banging in this 10 millimeter triple square, a longer one, um, kind of routed underneath that exhaust right there, and it finally broke free. I, I thought it was gonna strip out. All right, we're going three for three. God bless it, it is a great Sunday. The Lord has bestowed his honor upon us. We got that third one loose on top, so. There's the charge pipe on the compressor side. I may have to unbolt it on the I don't know if it bolts into the head or where it goes, but I'll have to go up there and take a peek at it and then see what I can do. Because I think that's gonna have to come out if I'm not mistaken. You can kind of see what I'm talking about. We're about to air hammer it and try to chisel it a little bit maybe get it loose and if not I might just might just pop the whole thing off I've got all five out of the six but this one is giving us quite a bit of trouble that was a little bit of a nightmare here we got the final bolt out uh, the final bolt out that bottom right one right there um, ended up having to use an air hammer Gus was able to get it out sitting in there like that and you really couldn't put a socket on i was trying for about two maybe even three hours to get a socket on this thing and i couldn't so gus was able to get an air hammer on there rotate it out and i could probably reuse it if i need to but i'm gonna go ahead and replace those but yeah all all this removal to get to this right here uh, there's a little cover right here i'll show you in a second um, essentially this covers up the sprocket portion of the chain on the high pressure fuel pump and you need to put a little allen through here so it doesn't fall and uh, you don't lose time on it so once I get some type of allen through there we're going to be resealing this thing putting it back together and sending it on its way all this to do the high pressure fuel pump uh, is this a job you can do at home 
maybe. I would definitely have the garage ready, all the, all the tools, and definitely an air hammer handy. I want to soak these bolts beforehand and have a lot of patience ready. Uh, this is not something for the faint of heart. This is uh, definitely a little bit of a bitch to get those, those bottom bolts out on the exhaust manifolds here. All right, an absolute nightmare to take this turbocharger off, but now we finally have access to this little gear back here. If you can see, there's some uh, some holes in there along this line. Hopefully this will fit. Just like that, maybe something a little bit different. But I have to have something here so that that gear does not fall because the pump is squined into there and this is the timing chain, so. I would be kind of cooked if I let that fall. So, I'm gonna find something else, maybe a smaller pick or something, and then uh, stick it through there, and then I should be able to remove the pump after this. As far as the turbocharger goes, this thing is an absolute nightmare. Uh, these three bolts, pretty easy, or nuts I should say, pretty easy. These down there, five out of six are very easy, um, for the most part, as long as you have some patience. They, uh, they all pretty much came out no problem but then the inner right one right here was damn near impossible to get any type of sock on uh, any meaningful grip was kind of sketchy and it's gonna slip so we we're able to get an air hammer on there with a the long extension kind of banging out and we are good now so after removing that there's a little bit of wiggling and finagling to get this pipe out but after that it did come out with relatively no issues so once that turbo's off, you can remove this pedestal assembly, which is a few more 10 triple squares, 10 millimeter triple squares. Take those out, the whole pedestal comes out, and then you get access to this little sprocket right here. They could have added a service hole, but they didn't want to do that. So kind of stuck in the situation where you have to remove the entire turbocharger assembly to do the high pressure fuel pump. So doing this at home, it's gonna be a little bit more challenging, but I know you can do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and find something that sticks in there giggity giggity and try to see if we can hold it down and take off the pump all right don't mind my ghetto fabulous rigging of this but uh seems to be in there pretty well so there's a little hole right there you see where the pig is going in that's where the end portion meets and uh should go all the way through just like that Go through that hole and stick there so now we're going to try and remove the pump there's going to be two hard lines one here one at the bottom there, it's gonna be a little bit harder to reach. And then two soft lines for the return and the supply. And there's gonna be an electrical connector going onto the going onto the metering valve slash quantity control valve. And then there's gonna be three more 10 millimeter triple squares around there holding the pump in. After that, we're gonna pull it out, swap over the gear. Uh, this is a little spline gear that goes on here. And then we're gonna go ahead and swap it and then hopefully throw everything back together really quickly. Got the spline swapped over from the previous pump. Uh, essentially, you just take that nut off, probably put it in a vise with some brass jaws on it so you don't damage it. Uh, make sure to lock down on it. And that'll be a 24 millimeter nut. It's not left-hand thread or anything, it's a normal, normal thread. So after you get it off, it might be a little stuck on there. So I use the air hammer again on the other one in that little that little hole in there, holding out to the gear. I just kind of held on to that and zapped it off real quick. Didn't even really damage it. So that one might be able to get rebuilt, but we'll be throwing this one in a second here. Notice there wasn't really too many YouTube videos online about this, so I feel like it'd probably be the most helpful to uh, get the information out on how to do this, because uh, diving in here is uh, kind of a pain in the ass, so. Anything I could do to help you guys out would uh, probably greatly benefit the community. So here we are. Uh, we're about to throw it back in right now. We're going to have to line up that little portion right there. Uh, the flat spot on it with the flat spot on the spline. And then from there, we will throw it all back together. I got a little bit more cleaning to do around this side of the valley, but it is, uh, it's going to more than suffice for right now. So... Once everything's all cleaned up and put back together, I'll give you guys another update. That pretty much concludes my footage for what I've recorded for that job. I apologize if it wasn't the most detailed thing in the world. 
But uh, it's a general idea of how to replace the pump. I didn't really see any videos online pertaining to it, so I think this will be the most detailed one yet. But I will have to do another one later in the future when I get a pair of Meta Ray Band glasses and uh, show you guys the whole procedure. So um, I would like to say fairly straightforward. It's not as hard as like doing a timing chain or anything on these, but since it deals with the timing chain, you have to be very careful to not let that sprocket drop. Uh, if it does, you'll probably be needing to do timing if that sprocket drops at all, because uh, I believe the tensioner is like a ratcheting style, so there's no to free the tension off it once it once it ratchets down. So, um, with that being said, uh, everything went together pretty nicely. Once that spline goes in on the uh, high pressure fuel pump, you're able to kind of wiggle it around. You gotta be very careful because there's two plastic guides for the timing chain back there, and um, they're they're probably gonna be pretty brittle from age, so you gotta be very careful not to shift the pump around too much or pry at anything, because you may break those, and then once again, you would be doing timing. So, with all that being said, uh, it's finished up right now. I just dropped it off back in Indiana. Um, it's kind of a drive, it was like an hour, 40 minutes, but he came to me initially, so I dropped it off to him. Uh, drove really nice on the highway. New high pressure fuel pump definitely makes a sizable difference. Uh, before you even start it, though, I, you, uh, you're you going to have to go through the fuel bleeding procedure on it, which is essentially opening up the scan tool and running the lift pump or the low-pressure fuel pump in the tank for a little bit. I would do that for about, like, 5 to 10 minutes just to make sure you get as much air out of the system as possible because um, any fuel starvation with these pumps is uh, pretty much guaranteed to cause a little bit of damage or a lot of damage depending on how much fuel you're missing in that system. So it's important to run the low pressure fuel pump for as long as you can and uh, get it nice and primed before starting it. After that, start it up real nice. Uh, no check engine or anything, no emissions lights. So I uh, drove it all the way back there and dropped it off to him. Um, overall, the difficulty scale of the job, I would say would be like a eight or nine out of 10. It's definitely something you're gonna to wanna to be prepared for. Definitely have all your triple squares, sockets, extensions, swivels, um, and air hammer with a longer bit on it if you have to rotate that bottom bolt out. Uh, if you can get that out, props to you, kudos. Uh, but I was trying for two or three hours damn near to uh, get a socket in there because I was very reluctant to give up on it. But didn't strip it out, but ended up having to rotate it out with the air hammer. Shout out Gus, he, uh, he helped me out with that one. But other than that, it went pretty smoothly. Um, got the new gaskets for the pedestal assembly and the turbocharger exhaust gaskets. And uh, that pretty much wrapped it up. I'll link the other video in the description of removing the intake manifold, and then that will be that. Uh, everything else it's kind of straightforward, I'd like to say. It takes a little bit of diligence to do everything. But uh, if you guys have any questions or concerns, leave it in the comments. And uh, subscribe if you enjoy this type of content because it's uh, definitely a little bit involved to do this type of stuff. But if you guys liked it, feel free to leave a like, subscribe, and comment if you have any questions. But I will see you guys in the next video.